A ship owner was about to send to sea an emigrant ship. He knew that she was old and not well built at the first, that she had seen many seas and climes and often had needed repairs. Doubts had been suggested to him that possibly she was not seaworthy. These doubts preyed upon his mind and made him unhappy. He thought that perhaps he ought to have her thoroughly overhauled and refitted, even though this should put him at great expense. Before the ship sailed, however, he succeeded in overcoming these melancholy reflections. He said to himself that she had gone safely through so many voyages and weathered so many storms that it was idle to suppose she would not come safely home from this trip also. He would put his trust in Providence, which could hardly fail to protect all these unhappy families that were leaving their fatherland to seek for better times elsewhere. He would dismiss from his mind all ungenerous suspicions about the honesty of builders and contractors. In such ways, he acquired a sincere and comfortable conviction that his vessel was thoroughly safe and seaworthy. He watched her departure with a light heart and benevolent wishes for the success of the exiles in their strange new home that was to be. And he got his insurance money when she went down in mid-ocean and told no tales. What shall we say of him? Surely this, that he was verily guilty of the death of those families. It is admitted that he did sincerely believe in the soundness of his ship, but the sincerity of his conviction can in no wise help him, because he had no right to believe on such evidence as was before him. He had acquired his belief not by honestly earning it in patient investigation, but by stifling his doubts. And although in the end he may have felt so sure about it that he could not think otherwise, yet inasmuch as he had knowingly and willingly worked himself into that frame of mind, he must be held responsible for it. William K. Clifford, 1874. Yeah, I like this William K. Clifford guy uh, so far anyway. A ship owner was about to send to sea a venerable old ship. He knew that her barnacled hull, however, had often needed repairs, and doubts were suggested to him that possibly she was not seaworthy. The conscientious old captain thought at once to have her thoroughly refitted, even though it should put him at great expense. Before the ship sailed, however, he managed to stifle these bothersome misgivings, and said to himself that she had gone safely through so many voyages that it was idle to suppose that this trip should be any different. He put his trust in Providence, and banished from his mind all ungenerous suspicions about the honesty of the ship's builders, and in such ways he acquired a sincere and comfortable conviction that his vessel was altogether safe and seaworthy. He watched her departure with a light heart, encouraging the crew to dream of the profits that this voyage would return. And he got his insurance money when she went down in mid-ocean and told no tales. What shall we say of him? Surely this, that his belief in the safety of his ship was justified because it was grounded in repeated practical experimentation rather than the hubris of rationalistic a priori belief. It is admitted that he put his confidence in the builders of this vessel, but even this confidence was misplaced. For these were the selfsame charlatans who sought to sell him gratuitous repairs later on, and Big Ship is always trying to get one over on the little guy. Further, we may see that the ship is religion, and the shipwright is Richard Dawkins. The crewmates are empiricism, and the barnacles are neoplatonism, and the captain <laughs> of that ship was Albert Einstein. What the hell was I talking about? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>